Whoa, oh, wow, check this out. Did you see the title of this video? Did you? I think it said something like, wait, it's like up here or something, like, Enemy AI Tutorial Part 1, Chasing Floating, and it's like, wow, that's pretty amazing. Because you guys have been waiting for this for months and months. And it's been busy around here, but I'm finally getting motivated to do it. I have some free time, so let's do it. Alright, let's take a look at what we got here. Oh yeah, I'm your Meadow Hair for the day, but you should have been able to figure that out by now. I'm your Meadow Hair, and this is what we got. We have detectors. We have two enemies, and we have platform engine where you can go from, from side to side and jump. That's it. But what's this over here? We have a uh, boo engine chasing land enemy. Wow. Yep, yeah, this is what we're going to get into in future videos. This is going to be a series, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to even be able to make this. Oh my goodness, for all you Mario fan game makers, this is exactly what you'd want, right? I sure hope so. Because we're going to figure out how to do that. Also, we're going to eventually figure out how to make an enemy jump and chase after you over terrain. But for now, let's focus on what's at hand here. So, let's see. We have an engine where if you jump into their field of vision, the enemy's field of vision, they will chase after you. Step out of one, the other one will ch keep chasing you. Step out of the other, this one will keep chasing you. Simple. But magic of this engine is if you make two more enemies, or one more enemy and one more field of vision, it will automatically take that one up, and it will behave just like any other enemy. You can create however many you want, however few you want, doesn't matter where they're located, it will always work the exact same way. No, they do not hurt you when they touch you and just run away just to signify, you know, just to goof off. So let's remake this, shall we? Get right into it because I don't want this video to be too darn long. Alright, get out your multimedia fusion skills and let's get started. Let's create an active object, go in here and just for show, let's create a really simple frame, animation, whatever you want to call it. It's just, I'm just going to make it an eyeball just to show that it's looking at you and, you know, stuff like that. Create a hot spot, move it to the middle, it's action point, doesn't matter where you put it, I'm just going to put it right there. Animation speed doesn't matter, let's take the slider, move it all the way up so it has a bunch of directions and create the rotated directions. And it should look like this. Let's name it. Enemy 2. Set these guys over here so that they'll just watch. Um, you guys should have a platform engine just sitting around somewhere. If you don't, then go download the one I put up online. Uh, and we already have an event, our group called Chasing Enemies, because I was preparing this video. And let's get started by just putting in an always direction, looking direction of this thing's action point, or, yeah, because otherwise we'll be looking at the top left corner, and we wouldn't want that, would we? Uh, so yeah, test that. It'll look at you. Nothing amazing, just to keep it from getting boring in here. Whoops. Yeah, so everything looks at you now. We have a bunch of creepers, they all look at you. Do not be alarmed. Alright, let's make another object. Let us make another object, we'll make it 256 by 256. It's going to be quite large, just to make a, a giant sphere of your preferred color. I'm going to make mine bright, bright green. Neon green, in fact. Just a hot spot to the middle, action point to the middle, and I missed one pixel down here. That's okay, doesn't matter. Wow, that's bright. Alright, let's set its effect to semi transparent and set its blend value or coefficient to like 200 or something. There you go. We'll 
will name this Detector 2. Oh, we can't because these are named Detector and Detector 2. It's going to just def default it to Detector 4, and that's okay. Alright, let's go in here, go into its properties, and we're going to change some stuff in both of these things, so get ready. Uncheck this and that doesn't really matter too much, but I just tend to do that. Um, add an alterable value, value A, name it ID. This thing, do the same. Add a value, name it ID. Uncheck this and this, and change this thing's movement to bouncing ball, set its movement to something small, like 8, and run it. And the thing's already chasing you because we did not uncheck moving at start and do that. Also, 8 seems a little fast, actually, so let's change it down to 4. Alright, let's get started. Let's save it. And what am I doing on time? How am I doing on time? 6 minutes and 14 seconds. Great. Alright, let's get, do this quickly because I don't want to make this a 20 minute video might end up being it anyway. Okay, so we have it always looking at you. Let's create another always. And on always start loop. Name it EN ID 2. With those capitals. Well, you don't have to type it exactly that way, but make sure you keep it consistent no matter what you do. And we're going to run it, count number of objects of our enemy which looks suspiciously like dark matter from Kirby no copyright infringement infringement intended I'm sorry Hal I didn't mean it I surely did not mean to make this in any way resembling Kirby at all it just happened to be that way it just I don't know it just kind of happened. I didn't mean to make it like Kirby. And, you know. Just, uh, yeah, anyway. So, Dark Matter. I mean, I mean, Enemy 2, not Dark Matter, chases uh, Collider, who is not named Kirby. And, uh, no copyright infringement intended. Okay, enough of that. Let's start this by adding an on loop. And we're going to type in our n id 2. Make sure you keep it consistent. If you do not, this will not work. And we're going to add this. This is where it gets complicated. Okay, when this thing's id equal to, go to special all the way down to loop index, get loop index, and ID 2, make sure you always keep the capitals and everything the same, I cannot stress that enough. When that is equal to that, and when this thing, the de detector 4, when this thing's ID is equal to dark, I mean enemy 2's ID, Pay no attention to that. And then this thing will set its position to this thing's position. Let's see if it works. Yes, it did. The real test, however, is creating multiples and seeing if it still works. Which it does. Congratulations. If that works for you, you've done half the work already. Because this is all. It's just five events that creates that whole thing. Okay, so now create another on loop from this thing. Alright, I'm going to refer back to my pre made thing. Da 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 da. Okay. So now it's when this thing, detector 4, is equal to that. And now we're going to switch it up so that when this thing. When the ID of dark map is enemy 2 is equal to detector 4, and we're going to add when this thing is overlapping, Kurt, I mean collider, oh, not collision, whoops, 
make sure you do overlapping another object that thing we're going to make this thing start alright let's test that out it's too high I can't reach it going to have to move it down so that it's field of vision right there oh, and it follows but there's a problem we got a problem Houston oh yes we got a problem this thing will not stop even if you go out of its field of field vision how are we going to prevent that? Let's make another event. NID. This thing. Can pretty much copy this. And say when this is not overlapping that. Stop. Stop. And it should stop and start accordingly. And we are done. Not kidding. That's all you need us to do. Now, create multiple of these. Uh oh. I lied. That's not all you need to do. I screwed it up. You know why? Because, uh... Where's the... Oh, there it is. Yeah, you need to create a start of frame. Can't believe I forgot this. Spread value 0, and that's things ID. And copy it over to the detectors, too. And now it'll work. So now each of them, what spread value does, in case you forgot, is it looks at all your objects and says, okay, we have two of these things, I'm going to put zero in this one's ID and one in this one's ID, you make one more, I'm going to put two in this one's ID. It basically counts the objects and puts their number or their personal ID in each iteration of the object, or each instance, as they'd say. So now the loop kind of counts through all of them and puts their individual values in there. All that good stuff. And here we go. Of course, it doesn't look quite as good unless you make these things all invisible. And there you go. Now you got a bunch of chasing enemies. God help you. Because, you know what, these things are fast now. Oh boy, Dark Man, I mean, uh, yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. These things are really out to get me now. No, Dark Matter. No. No. Blah, 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 blah. And I got killed. Alright, that's the first part of our enemy AI. Took me around... 12 minutes and 45, 48, 49, however many seconds that is to complete it. Hope you learned something from this. And, uh, yeah. I'll freeze, or I'll look over, just stop over this and, uh, go through all this just to review. Start a frame, we're going to spread value in both of these things. The, both the IDs of our detector and our enemy too. Spread value zero in each of them, make sure it's the same value in each of them. We're going to, this is just for show, make it always look at Kirby, I mean enemy collider thing. Always need to make sure, absolutely sure, that your spelling and capitalization is always the same in these. Cannot stress that enough, because if you mess it up once, it'll screw over the entire thing. Make sure you don't do that. Then, on N of NID2, loop. The only reason I made it too is because I already used it up here. When this thing is equal to loop ID, loop index I mean, set that to that, so on, start when this happens, stop when this happens, simple. Alright, if you can do that, then you should be well equipped to do this next week, next whatever, and we're going to have tons of fun with the boos because you can change their speed so easily and make them completely destroy your character and wow they are fast now and yeah it's going to be lots of fun hope you enjoyed this video if you have questions ask them in the comments I may or may not respond sorry but yeah Kirby says goodbye Dark Matter says goodbye. Now I'm going to be sued by Hal. Too bad. Oh well. See you next time when we do the Boo Engine. And...
until then, I've been your meadow hare for the day. See you later. And here we go, turning this.